Okay. All right, if everybody's ready, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Todd Slisher. I'm the Executive Director of Sloan Museum in Longway Planetarium, and also an astronomer by uh, background at least. And uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, we led a team yesterday about uh, on a search about 3 o'clock in the afternoon that actually managed to recover three pieces of the boiloid or meteor that appeared over the Michigan skies on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the story of how we did this is kind of interesting. Uh, it started out with obviously many visual sightings on Tuesday. And although I didn't see the meteor itself on Tuesday, I have cameras in my house, Nest cameras, that picked up the actual light from the meteor and showed me the shadows of the house. And by using the shadows of the house, I was able to calculate the rough location that the meteor should have come down. So we had that data. That was pretty good data to start with. We got a rough location based on that. Then we went to the American Meteor Society page where they take reports all from out the six state region that the meteor was seen. And so they use those reports to try to triangulate the location of the meteor and its flight path. And their data corroborated ours. Their data um, matched up with the data that I had from the pictures of the house. So we knew we were in the right general area. I then reached out to a good friend of mine. His name is Rob Landis, and he probably has the coolest title in, on Earth. He's, uh, his title at NASA is uh, Director of Planetary Defense. And he actually runs an agency that looks for asteroids and meteors and if they're going to hit Earth and uh, calculates ways that we might be able to deflect them and things like that. So he's an expert in this area. And he clued me into the fact that uh, weather data can actually, weather radar can actually uh, show you the pieces of debris falling down after the meteor exploded. So we started looking at weather data and he sent over some weather data that we had. And by those three pieces of data points, we were able to track down pretty precisely where we thought the meteor was. So a crew of us from Longway Planetarium that included uh, Buddy Stark and Brian Wolf, and then also individuals from the Farmington Community Stargazers, which is a local astronomy club that uh, I'm familiar, uh, affiliated with, uh, went out on a hunt and went out looking. We started about three o'clock in the afternoon and scoured some fields and areas, and then we started um, with the idea that we should look on the frozen lakes, because any stone found on a frozen lake is, probably doesn't belong there. It's not gonna get there naturally. Uh, we found the first smallest piece at about five o'clock, and then we found two more pieces at about 5.30 and six o'clock yesterday afternoon, early evening. Uh, then the sun started going down, we lost the light, so we weren't able to find any more. I'm not going to reveal the exact location that we found the meteorite fragments because I have a team out there right now looking for more. And so we're just going to say south of Hull right now is the general area that we were searching and looking for the meteorite fragments. So this morning, I have one of the fragments here. This is the one that I personally found. It was the first piece found and it's the smallest. The other two will be here in the afternoon. Uh, Brian Wolf discovered the largest species, also here from Longway, and then Tony Licata, who's a member of the Farmington Community Stargazers. Uh, he was a gentleman that found the medium-sized piece, and he'll be here this afternoon too. So we'll assemble all three pieces this afternoon and get some pictures there, but right now we have the smallest piece to show you, and uh, we have it actually in a container right over here. It's being kept on ice, because in my communications with NASA, they would like to analyze this for organic material. And if we let it heat up to room temperature for too long, that material could actually either become compromised, could uh, melt, or if it's uh, water ice, uh, or water ices and things like that, it could melt. So we're keeping it frozen and cold, so we're only taking it out for short periods of time. We're also putting it on tinfoil, uh, to keep it from interacting with any organic material. We don't want it to be uh, contaminated before we send it off to NASA. The other two pieces, uh, this piece we'll probably send to NASA, the other two pieces we'll keep here at Longway Planetarium and eventually put on, this, on permanent display. Eventually NASA will send us this piece back as well, so we'll have all three pieces here at Longway Planetarium. But with that, I guess we'll do the big reveal. Is everybody ready to see the, the little teeny tiny chunk that we found? <laughs> it's small, I'm warning you, it's really small. It's about the size of a nipple. But, We'll come over here, everybody's shifting their cameras. All right. And I have it in tin foil in a plastic bag. Again, plastic is an organic material, so it's wrapped in tin foil to keep it from interacting with the plastic. And of course, I have to be very careful not to touch it. 
there it is. Very small. Now, a lot of people might say, well, how do you know that's a meteorite? Um, one of the ways that we know is you can see the blackness of it. That is a very thin, what's called a fusion crust, which forms on the outside of meteorites as they're burning up as they pass through the atmosphere. So that black material here is not very thick. It's in a layer probably a millimeter or less thick. And there are spots on this that actually chip off, the black material is chipped off. So you can see it is actually a crust that surrounds it all the way. The other way that we're almost south, uh, um, with that we know that this is a meteor is just by some of the pockets that are there that forms when uh, passes through the atmosphere and burns up. And also the other two pieces we found, again, on the surface of a frozen lake are identical to this. They're just larger. This also matches up with the other pieces that have been found that I've heard about and seen some news reports on. They look exact, exactly identical. This would be a stony meteor. It doesn't have much iron content. We were kind of surprised because it didn't actually pick up on our metal detector, but uh, stony meteorites don't contain a whole lot of iron. They might have some nickel in them, which is not a ferrous metal, so they don't set off a metal detector. So we're pretty sure that the original uh, uh, meteor that came down uh, that shat shattered and fragmented was stony, and this is one of the pieces of the original meteor. Carefully. That's the largest of the three pieces. Of the